allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the September 23rd, 2019 Selectman's Meeting. First, we'll start with public comment. Please join us at the podium. Good evening. Uh, Richard Rennie at 29 Highland Ave. Uh, a couple points. Uh, as you're probably aware of, we on Highland Ave, we have the decorative streetlights. Presently, there are six of them inoperative. Now, I called Public Works probably two weeks ago uh, and gave them a list of the location of those lights. And I, I know Public Works has been pretty busy, but uh, maybe I'm just asking this board to kind of prompt things up a little bit and see if we can get those lights going again. One of them, uh, and I noticed too, that with the construction of the Kentville, they've removed three of those lights. But I assume that, and I expect that when the construction is done, that the lights will be replaced and that the sidewalk will be returned back to concrete. But anyway, in the meantime, there are six of them that are out, and I would appreciate uh, your input if you can get them back up, up and running. Uh, the second point is, uh, like I mentioned, I did call Public Works a couple of weeks ago. No problem. Last week, I had occasion to uh, seek some information from uh, Parks and Recreation, and it seems that we have a new system here in Town Hall. If you call the town hall number, you're prompted to go to the Hampton Beach website to get telephone numbers from the various departments, which means that, uh, using that whole old term, hang up the phone, go to your computer, find the, t the, the department's number, and then recall. Second option that you have is if you hang on, if you hang on, you are connected to the uh, town manager's office, and the response there from uh, Christina is to uh, ask for your name and address, and you will be contacted uh, with the number. So I guess maybe I'm requesting or asking. Let's go back to the old system. It was it was very uh, efficient. You would call, you would be prompted or told what department number you were looking for. Yeah. You'd press the appropriate number and you'd be connected to that apartment, the department. And rather than go through this whole hassle of uh, waiting for a call back, mm -hmm. I, I just think it would be better to go back to the system that you had before. Thank you. Thank you, that's good. Others wishing public comment? My name is Richard Bonin. I'm the owner of uh, 730, 739 Ocean Boulevard, and I'm requesting the opportunity to speak after number five, article two, um, with Mr. Dumpke's comments on 737 and 739, not knowing what they are, um, requesting the opportunity to speak after he speaks. Um, that's not something that we ordinarily do. But we could probably use um, the Well, we'll talk about it when the time comes. Well, I'd like to make the motion we allow it. I will second that motion. Well, we're at public comment right now. Right? Yeah, this is inappropriate. That would be appropriate when the time comes up to allow you to speak at that point in time. I, I guess that was an asking. We don't really sure. confer, We don't really talk back and forth either during public comment. So I guess. So any point. comments you'd like to make, make them, and that's what happens here. Okay. At this point or yes. afterwards? All right. Can I grab my? And this is the last time you should, th this is the last time ordinarily anyone would be able to speak. Mr. Chairman, we're here. Okay, Mrs. Sir, Wilson, we do not. Public. Mrs. Wilson, is our, this is not the time that we do this. It is our This is public comment, Mrs. Wilson. serve Wilsley. the public, yes, but you're fobbing the gentleman <clears throat> off, and we should be able to give him an idea when he can speak. Mrs. Wilson, I'd make a motion during. Out of line. After the appointment that we allow him to speak, I'll make that same I motion second again. that. I, I, no problem speaking afterwards, but at, at the appropriate it's time, the appropriate we can make time. the motion, this not isn't now. the way we do it. So we I do not it. interact with public comments. You're entitled to talk for three minutes, and that's it. When the time comes up, we'll see what happens then. Okay. Thank at that you. time. Yeah. Others wishing to speak? <clears throat> hey, 
Gary Pohl, 4 Lion Street. Uh, I'd just like to the town manager's report, I'd like <clears throat> if you could possibly uh, put in the, pot, the uh, approximate dates that they're going to be dredging the uh, harbor. I'd appreciate that. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak this evening? <laughs> Hi, my name is Elisa Maestrellis Ring. I live at 139 High Street, the house on the corner of Academy Ave and High Street. I've written my comments so that I can stay within my time limit. I'm here tonight because about a week ago I reached out to our elected official, uh, Rick Griffin, and shortly after Fred Welsh, our town manager, to let them know that the residents on Academy Ave, and in fact other Hampton residents, had issues with the excessive and bright exterior lighting that was recently put in place as part of the Hampton Academy School Building Project. I shared with them this letter that I wrote to the superintendent and on behalf of myself and other residents on the street. And I believe you have a copy, and if you don't, but would like one, I have one here. Um, thank you both, Rick and Fred, um, for your fast replies and courtesy. Fred explained to me, however, that under New Hampshire law, the town and school are completely separate, and the bottom line is that no one here really has jurisdiction over anything that the school systems do. Um, and therefore can really only comment as private citizens. And that those laws go back to as early as the 1800s. And so um, when I read that from Fred, I did immediately recall this to be the case because five years ago, we were equally as upset about the LED sign across the street on the corner of uh, High Street and Academy that went up. Um, not being considered as residents in that school decision either. But respectfully, maybe um, at some future time, we could look at maybe making changes to laws that are 200 years old. I don't know. <laughs> but on this issue of school lighting, um, we'll continue to work amiably with the superintendent of schools and the school board. But for tonight, I just want to speak on the broader issue of light pollution. I know it's a buzzword, but it's very real. And bring a little more awareness to it, uh, since undoubtedly there will be future lighting projects in town not associated with schools. Um, Let's see, there are lots of things and examples that we can do for best practices today. The shielding of lights, warmer color versus those blue lights, timers, motion detectors, and an operation plan that takes into consideration the surrounding residents. Um, artificial light at night actually does affect our safety, health, environment, and unshielded lights that are too bright really do cause that hazard glare. We've mm -hmm. all come across it. Um, fortunately, it's very easy to have good lighting now that the industry itself has caught up with the science and there are excellent and affordable consultants. Some of them do it just because they really believe strongly in the issue for uh, free or very low price who can assist before lighting is put into place. Mm -hmm. And then there are a couple of other issues that we think would be under the town's jurisdiction, uh, neighborhood and trees. So. Uh, with neighbors, two of them being uh, Cindy Martin and uh, Clara Clarity, uh, whose words I'm sort of paraphrasing in the next uh, minute here in part tonight. I've also discussed the importance of neighborhood. The school very much wanted to remain part of the town and in the neighborhood and remodel rather than build new in a more remote location. And we appreciated that and many of us voted for it. But now, because those seven and now eight mature trees have mm -hmm. been removed and not replaced, there is a decrease of how attractive, truly, and comfortable the street is, uh, the, the brightness, no shading, um, and the heat. And the street that was once uh, truly uh, such a beautiful street in Hampton, I'm afraid, is not so much anymore. I'm wondering if there's a plan in place to replace these trees. If so, maybe when? Uh, a buffer of trees would help us solve the glaring light issues that come into our homes, as well as restore the beauty of our street. It would also help create a wind break from the east winds that scream across that school parking lot directly at those residents on that side of the street. And we're going to have to bring this to an end. Oh, we are? Okay, um, <laughs> it was so good. There was just one more part about the parking signs. I thought that they were going to be temporary while the buses were being rerouted, mm -hmm. but now I'm understanding, this may or may not be true, that they're going to be permanent. So these are issues that we want to raise. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much you. for your time. I'm sorry I went over. That's okay. Thank okay. You. Anyone else wishing to speak? Good evening. I'm 
Carla Clorty. I live at 22 Academy Ave, directly across from the parking lot. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, my husband and I moved to Hampton about three years ago after a long look at houses. We looked uh, in Newmarket, we looked in Stratum, Exeter, Elliott, Berwick, Kittery, uh, and we didn't just look for a house, we looked for a neighborhood. Um, someplace we could, re we could retire in and bring our kids and our family and our grandkids. Uh, when I came around the corner for Academy Ave and drove down the street, I was immediately struck that this felt like home. It felt like a neighborhood. The trees that have been there probably 50 years lined the streets. Um, the minute I turned on the street, I loved that. And then about two months after we moved in, we received three letters from the town. The first was uh, there was going to be a two-year construction project directly across the street. The second was, they're gonna take 11 trees down on our street. And the third was, your taxes are gonna go up $2,000. That was fine, I'm all for quality education, the trees were sick, and municipal improvements are always good. However, if you're gonna cut down all of our trees on our street, you could at least replace them. And I do believe that the growth of the trees, if you put some maples that are fast growing, we could create a buffer with the lighting that is very intrusive and shines directly into our houses when we're trying to sleep. Um, they would lower the, the wind, it would help with the noise that is created day and night at the school because there's a lot of things that happen over there. And I feel like I live across the street from a Walmart parking lot now. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's about it. And thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank and you for your comments. I hope we get some green back in our life. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Anyone else wish wishing to speak this evening? Seeing none, we will move to announcements and community calendar. Mr. Waddell. Nothing. Mr. Bridal. Nope, nothing. Mary Louise. Yes, um, the Academy will be having an open house on Saturday, October 5th, starting at 10 a.m. I will attend that. I will bring your memo with me and talk to the superintendent to see if we can have any kind of uh, help. If this is community comment, Mrs. Wolseley. We do not well, talk to the Community comment has during... taken place. Okay, your This says community. announcements. Do I need to refresh your in your mind what community calendar? This, this says announcements this, okay. and community this, calendar. And this is the announcements. It's not. Well, any, I just announced the do... community calendar, October 5th at 10 a.m. Okay. Thank you. Regina? I'm good. Moving on to approval of minutes, September 9, 2019. I will so move that we approve the minutes. Is that just the regular minutes? There were no non-public? Just right. regular minutes. Yeah, right. Okay, I will so move. Second. We approve. All those in favor? Unanimous. One abstention. And one abstention. Um, next, we have the Cons the um, consent agenda. There is a conservation commission appointment, parade and public gathering license, the Christmas parade, fall festival at Cornerstone, road closure permits with the Christmas parade, permission for ongoing reports to Old Park Avenue. Repairs. Repairs. Oh, repairs, I'm sorry. Release of lien for Hampton Trailer Park. We've already dealt I have a question on the consent agenda number two and three. Parade and public gathering license experience Hampton Christmas Parade and road closure permits experience Hampton Christmas Parade. I saw an email saying that we could possibly be inviting uh, U.S. political candidates to the parade. I don't think we should turn this into a political event. Right. I think the only politicians that should be a part of it are our local state senator, state reps, and the board of selectmen if they so choose. So. I just wanted to see if we could clarify that tonight or I will not be signing the uh, licenses. Well, they've always been allowed to have the senators or anyone that is elected right. to come. But I'm talking about U.S. It's not time for campaigning. Well, U.S. senators have come in the past. But they're already holding office, I think. Yes. Yeah, the ones Regina's that are talking about. Are, are, have Regina's always been talking invited. about candidates. Well, yeah. they're candidates, too. I mean, it's always been invited. Be a candidate. It's always been a letter sent 
And it's the always sitting, been that way. Yes, I'm the talking sitting about ones, yes, okay. other yes. candidates that they were talking about. And what about the other, Mr. Welch? Has what's ha happened there in the past? Well, Mr. Chairman, we've had a mix. Um, I've seen. We usually don't have 20 or 30 candidates running for president, but. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> And, and this permit is for somebody else to run a parade, not for the town. So we have no way of restricting who's in the parade. It's their parade if you approve it. And if the people want, the other candidates want to come and watch the parade, no one's going to be there to tell I'm them. I'm sure we can, can find some place on the side of the street for them to sit. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I move the consent calendar. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Against? Abstaining. I'm going to abstain. I'll abstain. Two abstentions, three, four. Thank you. <clears throat> First on the appointments tonight, we have Christy, our finance director. Good. You've been working hard. <laughs> Good evening, Christy. Yes. Good evening. All right. So you guys should have all uh, received the almost at October. Let's we'll stay with August mm -hmm. financials. Yep. Um, it's the eighth report of the year. Hard to believe that that is already the case. The target is 66.67%. When you review the attached revenue report, you can see the difference in revenue from 2018 to 2019. The 2019 revenue is higher than the 18 revenue by $455,972. The one item that continues to make up the, the large item that continues to make up this increase is the 224914 that we got back from Primex and um, insurance mm -hmm. premium returns. Yeah. So we're basically over the budget by $231,058. So that number is still growing. The mo month's total income was $738,044. Of that total, motor vehicles came in at 15000 142, interest on taxes at 4,961, building permits at 30,525, highway subsidy at 97,053, departmental income at 100,430, rice sewer agreement at 17,867, interest on deposits at 11,742, Parking lots at $104,565, district court fines at $9,117, and the real estate trust at $45,673. Hmm. And I think I'm going to have to make a correction already because motor vehicles never comes in at 15000 I think I must have uh, <laughs> eliminated a number there. I'm going to guess 115 but we can do the math if you guys prefer in a minute. Um, on the expense side, you will find that we are 63.59% spent or under budget by $775,468. General government is under budget by $169,010. The police department is under budget by $223,528. The fire department is over budget by $10,412. The building department is under budget by $15,460. The hydrants will end the year over budget by $24,754, as both of the payments um, for hydrants have been made for 2019. Public Works is under budget by $404,568, but there's a lot of um, projects going on right now, so my best guess is that money will be expended. Animal control is under budget by 7,318. Parks and recreation is under budget by 22,856. And the library is over budget by 9,487. Fund 24, which is the recreation fund, has a balance of $236,999. And they've awarded $11,789 in um, scholarships this year. Fund 25, the Cable Committee, has a balance of $197,064. Fund 26, Private Detail, has a balance of $216,264. And Fund 27, the EMS Fund, has a balance of $453,047. The Wastewater System Development Charge, the fees collected in 2019 total $34,754 with a balance in the account of $216,633. And the um, 
expenditures that have been approved by this board but not expended yet total ninety five thousand four hundred and ninety one dollars and that is the report and it looks like it should be three hundred and fifteen thousand a hundred and forty two dollars for the motor vehicle um, income not fifteen thousand I must have left the three off there, so I will <laughs> correct that and repost them on the website, but just so you guys know. When I read that, I'm like, 15,000 for motor vehicles? I don't think so. <laughs> so that is what I have for tonight. Okay, questions? Uh, somebody will be like running after you to get the money back. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Christy, good job. Um, yeah, total me vehicles, motor vehicles is 2.6 million so far, yeah. which is a lot of money for uh, I read that 15. I was like that can't be right So it looks like <laughs> I left off the three there and thank you for your report. It's excellent as usual I have a couple questions um, First the next report. I wanted to tell you now if that's okay for September So would it be possible? I know we talked about it in your office before the dread transfer station building that shows the total tons and the amount billed Oh, yes. Yep. Would it be possible to have that updated through September along with, I know this is a public works question, but I'll just state it now, for the master trash and recycling spreadsheet yep. that Chris and Jen both spoke about at their last mm -hmm. update, because okay. I like to do a comparison on that. And the other thing I would like to have, if this is, I'm assuming this is going to come from you since you're the finance director, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, the Seafood Festival submitted expenses and reimbursements from the departments. It would be possible to get uh, those for 17, 18, and 2019 when those are available as yep. well. Yep. I know we um, have um, a few bills up there ready to go out to them, and we've already sent some out. So I'll just make sure we have all the bills for 19, and then I can get those numbers for you. All right, perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Good. Mr. Waddell. Thank you, Christy, for your report. Um, I noticed that uh, parking uh, revenue or parking tickets are down, right? Parking tickets, let's see. Yes, I believe they were down, yep, if I remember correctly. Right. Yes. But revenue from the, the parking lots is up. Is up. Yep. Okay. Hmm. So people are behaving the, themselves. <laughs> yeah, it looks like about we're down about 12,000 in parking tickets compared to where we were in August of uh, 18, yep. Okay, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bridal. Yeah, I was noticing you, you were saying the fire department's a little over budget, and I was noticing that it seems like uh, a lot of that has, has to do with overtime. It all does, yeah. I made myself a little sticky note here, and it's all in overtime. And the, yep. and, and the, uh, the, and sick, the board had approved him to staff until 9, I believe. Right, For a certain right. period of time. So I think those are the big drivers there, because the majority of the um, overages in um, under suppression in OT and OT callback. Both of those lines are 80 plus percent. So. Well, I know they've done more calls this year. Uh, yeah. uh, their call volume is up and and stuff like that. So that's what that was. And it. they're not over budget by, by that no. much. It's no, just no. That this month I decided instead of doing percentages, sometimes I like to mix it up and throw the dollars out mm -hmm. because dollars and percentages Correct. sound different, so. But I think. Uh, but I mean, they are not concerning at this point. No. be over by $10,000, that's. That's, yeah. nothing yeah. at all. But good report, thank you. And thank you for your report. It's, yep. uh, you did a great job as usual. I'm gonna fix that number just so you guys know and then I'm gonna <laughs> repost them on the website. Just, I don't usually have to do that, but I will do that because that looks. That's a first, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank, thank, you. You. Thank, you, thank you, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have Ralph Dumkey and Scott Ramsey. Good evening, my name is uh, Greg Ramsey. I think there may be a typo on the agenda. Okay. Uh, Gregory Ramsey is my name. Uh, there is a, an attorney in the office named Scott Wynn. That may be the, the, uh, the confusion. <laughs> um, again, my name is Gregory Ramsey. I'm here on behalf of Maria and Ralph Dumkey uh, with regard to our request for appointment. And again, I thank the chairman and the board for accepting our appointment. Our appointment. <clears throat> uh, we're here today uh, uh, on the subject matter of uh, 737 and 739 Ocean Boulevard. Um, and the, 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 which is not an, an issue that has been before this board as well as other boards in this town, uh, relating to unresolved parking issues, um, specifically relating to the uh, uh, enforcement of parking, um, the parking ordinances and the fire, with regard to the fire lanes in particular. Um, 
as I uh, as I mentioned, Mr. and Mrs. Dumpke uh, own uh, 741 Ocean Boulevard. Um, and uh, they're basically adjacent across the street from Second Street. Their, their neighbors uh, at 737, 739 um, have failed to comply with the approved planning board uh, plan um, as submitted um, and, and, and have consistently, uh, uh, for as far as I can tell, uh, not complied with that plan. Um, as a result of that, um, and effectively the, the failure to comply, is that the uh, planning board had approved four parking spaces for two of the condominiums at that property. Uh, two for each unit. Um, that was approved back in 2000 uh, by the planning board. Um, as a result of them, not, of the owners not, or not, not including all four of the parking spaces um, at that property, uh, the result has been uh, uh, parking on the street, uh, namely in the fire lane on 2nd Street, um, which has caused a number of different problems, the least of which is certainly a public hazard uh, for, for a number of different uh, uh, fire safety and rescue vehicles. Um, it, it also has resulted in at least one occasion uh, blocking my client's driveway, uh, which, which, which was uh, you know, regrettable, but uh, certainly something that can be avoided by enforcing our parking laws here in Hampton. Um, the matter has been going on, as I mentioned, for at least a year and a half, if not longer. Um, as I mentioned, this has been in front of this board as well as the planning board of this town uh, on a few occasions. Um, <clears throat> as, it, as it seems to be situated in the plans that we had submitted and the, the documents we had submitted in our letter of request, uh, back in August, uh, there appears to be only really one legal parking space uh, that was constructed at that property, uh, where there should be four. Uh, the two parking spaces at the front of the property along Ocean Boulevard, um, uh, the plans actually call for removal of a retaining wall and, and the landscaping that is there, and that was two parking spaces, as well as one in the back, which is the one that seems to be currently there, uh, and the one along the, the uh, t uh, second street, uh, which is where they, they park along the fire lane. <clears throat> in one of the parking spaces, there's actually a, a gas meter and a compressor uh, that doesn't allow for parking in that uh, approved parking space uh, and forces them into that fire lane. Um, we, uh, we, my client and I met with the town manager uh, as well as the town attorney, um, and that's what brought us to, to, to you folks today uh, to discuss this issue. Um, at their request, we, we, or the recommendation, rather, we submitted our request for appointment. Um, the, the, and just going back into some of the history, at the uh, May 2018 planning board meeting, um, the planning board was addressing a letter that the town manager had written back in April of 2018, uh, seeking, uh, at the request of this board, uh, to seek uh, the status of the, of the plan that was uh, mm -hmm. approved by that town, yeah. uh, by, by that, uh, for that property. Um, in response to that, uh, and it's pretty clear in the meeting minutes of that May meeting, that the, uh, the planning board noted that this site does not comply with the plan. Um, they have not uh, done much with it at this point. I believe there's a bit of a bouncing back and forth between boards, uh, potentially uh, the town manager as well, uh, as to what to do with it at this point as far as enforcement. Um, the, going back into the timeline of events, after that meeting in 2000, May of 2018, <coughs> um, rather than actually complying with what some of the recommendations at the planning board at the time was, was suggesting, which was to file an amended application for a plan, rather than actually doing that or rather than actually complying with the plan, uh, the owners of that property filed and recorded in the Registry of Deeds a, an amendment, amended uh, uh, condominium documents that uh, appeared to end around the requirements and the approved plans by the town uh, that reduced the number of parking spaces from four to two. Um, that is, is, has not been corrected as of today. Uh, it's been on record for quite some time. Um, and I think it's, it's certainly misleading as to what the town uh, the planning board specifically had approved. Um, but it also acknowledges, uh, as far as we can tell, that the owners acknowledge that they, they did, have not complied with the uh, original plan for that property. Um, <coughs> as I mentioned, the, the owners effectively, as a result of their failure to comply with it, this plan, are parking in the fire lane. Um, now, this is, I, I've heard of one occasion where there was a, a ticket, and I think the ticket was issued recently for the removal, maybe in, in June of this year. Uh, I'm not sure if that's happened since then. I don't believe it has. Uh, and previous to this, uh, I don't believe a ticket has been issued. Uh, I, I think the owners believe that it is their parking spaces um, to, to be had by that property, uh, even though those parking spaces are not uh, and are rather the fire lane or at least a portion of the fire lane. Um, so we are, we are simply asking this board uh, to, uh, to, to look into and to enforce uh, the rather, what I would determine, as selective enforcement of the Hampton rules and ordinances for, uh, for parking, um, for, again, for a number of reasons that I've mentioned, the least of which is certainly public safety. Um, 
the, again, as I pointed out, the planning board did note that this plan uh, and this site does not comply with the approved plan. Uh, so our, our request, as I mentioned, is simply that this board uh, seek enforcement of the, uh, uh, of their failure to approve or failure to follow the approved plan, uh, but more specifically that this board uh, seek enforcement through whatever agency it, it needs to, whether that be the town manager or the police department, to enforce its parking rules and ordinances uh, as it relates to this uh, this fire lane uh, to alleviate this issue. And I think uh, while we're <coughs> certainly cognizant of the fact that we have other alternatives, um, we, we don't want to have to exercise those opportunities uh, to go into court or, or other, other forums, forums rather. Um, we think it's a very simple issue that can be addressed and alleviated by this board um, so that the parties can move forward in, uh, in, as they are required to by this, uh, 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 this, this, this board and the rules of the city of Hampton or the town of Hampton. Um, so I, I, I would be certainly happy to answer any questions. Um, I don't know if there's anything further that you'd like to state on it, but um, that, that is also also included. Uh, most of the information that I provided today is a summary of what's in my August 27th letter that was submitted to the board, um, as well as the attached exhibits that uh, identify the actual issue. Mr. Walt. Mr. Chairman, uh, this has been an ongoing problem for a while. But I don't believe the board has the power at this point to take action because the applicants and owners of property have filed for an amended site plan with the planning board, which is scheduled for a meeting on October 2nd, which I believe is Wednesday, a week from Wednesday. Uh, the board should wait until, in fact, the planning board takes whatever action it's going to plan to take under a, uh, a statutory uh, definition of, of hearing. Uh, they have notified all the butters, I understand, uh, in accordance with the statute. Uh, so this situation may completely change by a week from Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could be very premature in taking any action at this point whatsoever. I would suggest that we wait until we see what the planning board intends to do. Mm -hmm. Mr. Waddell? I agree with what Fred just said. I agree, uh, but we did have a gentleman that got up asked to speak, mm -hmm. and uh, I have no problem with him. If uh, you want a motion to allow him to speak, I will make such a motion so that we can allow him to speak so at least he's got up here. And I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, questions. Uh, Mrs. Wolseley. No, I just, I think this is a planning board matter, frankly. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually, we'll come back to here. Eventually. The planning board should be enforcing whatever draws up. That's what the Board of Selectmen does, Mrs. Wolseley, for this issue. Uh, Regina? I have nothing at this time now. Okay. I just, I'd like to point out, we, uh, I'm in a butter and I haven't been notified. I've been notified, we requested to be at the- You need uh, to take that up with the planning board, sir. Yeah. Yeah. We have no jurisdiction. We, just said that we have no jurisdiction. We've been told the abutters have been notified. There was a public hearing on the, on the 4th of October. If you were not notified, then you have a complaint you should take up with the planning board. We can't control that. Mm. It's- it's their job. They'll probably change. There's a separate jurisdiction, a separate and if authority. And notice hasn't well. been provided, the hearing can't take place, correct? Well, I don't know that. But that's the process. I correct? don't know that. That's why you've got to inquire the planning board, because there should be a signed certification that the re something was received. We don't have control over that, because they're a separate board with separate mm -hmm. statutory authority. So that has to be checked with them. The town we don't planner, have the information. Yeah, the town planner should be able to. That's my point, is that you should be able to answer your question. And if, if there's a defect in the hearing, it'll have to be re-noticed. Uh, as it relates to the, the, I realize the board is looking to, to move this forward to a later hearing after the planning board has heard this matter. Um, I, I don't think that that is something that is necessary either. I think that the two boards can act independent of each other. Certainly this board can today say that the, the parking ordinances should be complied with regardless of whether the planning board does with the amendment or approved amendment or planned amendment, whatever is submitted to the planning board. I see those as entirely separate issues. Uh, if the rules are, are created by, by this town and this board, uh, or at least by, to be enforced by this board, uh, they are currently on record and they should be enforced unless and until there's some uh, alternative plan that is approved by some other body. Um, whether the, the town, uh, um, or rather the planning board, uh, accepts a, an amendment, amended plan or approves an amended plan, uh, it doesn't mean that the town shouldn't enforce other rules and laws that it already has on the books. And one of those rules is that you don't park in the fire lanes, and that is still currently happening on a regular basis. I don't see why the issues would have to be delayed to alleviate one issue when another issue is pending before a different body. Well, the problem is, um 
that, uh, uh, did you want to talk, Mark? Uh, it, it's obvious, as Attorney Ramsey indicated, that the, the issue of what's going on in the site is driving what goes on on the, on the uh, street. Mm -hmm. And so it's important where this is becoming, going before the Planning Board on October 4th for, for that process to be allowed to go forward because uh, if this board were to take some action now, it would be premature. And uh, even more than that, the enforcement, the actual enforcement on the ground of the town's parking regulations is a police matter and not a matter for this board. This board certainly would have the ability to direct the police department or the town manager to enforce. No, sir, the this rules. board does not have the authority to direct the police department. I'm That's part of the problem with the laws in New Hampshire. Chairman, Mr. Manager. Police chief. Town manager. Here too, I'm speaking so. to the chief. I just want to correct you because you're you're stating an incorrect an incorrect assumption. The police department does not is not under my control, is under the control of the chief of police by statute. And I'm I'm not suggesting that it is under your control. What I'm suggesting is is as I think Mr. Chairman has already said. If, if it's an enforcement of the rules of and, and ordinances of this town uh, is something that this body, this board of selectmen can enforce and should enforce, and that's not that is something that is before us today. We're not we're not asking that that anything be changed or that anything with in front of or maybe in front of the planning board be uh, curtailed or changed or or have, that they have a different or that they have a right not have a right rather to go before that board to seek an amendment to their plan. What we're saying is if they're parking in the fire lane, they shouldn't be. And until there's an amendment by another uh, uh, agency or board of this town, that rule should be enforced until there is a change, not wait and see if there's, uh, because the rule is still being violated as we stand here today. I think, sir, that you're assuming something. The chief of police is the one who determines whether or not the ordinance is being violated because he has the, the only power in the community to issue citations and tickets for improper parking. He has not issued tickets, except in some very rare occasions, okay? And you're saying that it's repeatedly violated every single day. It's, 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 it's unlawful to do what they're doing, and yet tickets are not being issued. So there must be a reason for that, and I suggest you take it up with the chief of police, because neither I nor this board can order the chief to issue a ticket where he sees that a violation is not occurring. Uh, and I'm not asking that you order or, 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 or direct the police, uh, police chief or any, any police officer to do so. What I'm asking for is this board uh, pursue the enforcement of this rule, whether the planning board hears uh, a matter for amendment or not. Uh, it is still a rule. It is still an ordinance as far as I know. And until that is vacated, that should be enforced by this town. I'm not sure. Uh, you're, you're telling me that this board has certain restrictions, and that may be the case. But it sounds like to me, uh, from, from comments from the chairman earlier, that this board would hear, ultimately, the enforcement of that rule. If the planning board petitions the Board of Selectmen under the statute to enforce a rule that they make, mm. condominium rule, whatever, parking rule, whatever, in regards to a site plan or a development that they approve, then this board can take up the subject and determine whether or not they care to exercise that authority. Yeah. or they can leave it to the abutter to, in fact, take the court action. They have that choice. But the planning board, being in control of those requirements under the statute, has the obligation to ask this board to do so, and they have not done so. Right. I'm hoping that on the 4th of October, the next the Wednesday when they're going to meet, that this issue can be resolved. If it can be, then we're all talking about Hopefully nothing at this point. Well, if I, if I may, the board is the planning board has already, uh, I believe, in, in one of the meeting minutes from this past June, suggested that they don't have an enforcement power, which is another reason why, after meeting with you and the town manager, we came before this board as well as the planning board, because there has been a ping pong ball, ping pong ball effect where we go before different boards, and every board points to the other board that they need to enforce or investigate this issue. We, my client has been before this board and the planning board several times. Uh, we are here again today simply asking that a rule that is on the books for this town be enforced. Well, Nothing more. The, the rule that you're talking about is a subdivision requirement called the condominium requirement. It was enacted by the planning board. We have asked them on several occasions to determine whether or not there is an infraction and whether or not they wish to have the Board of Selectmen enforce their original filing. Yeah. The answer has consistently been no. We're not going to issue that request. They have now scheduled a hearing or a meeting to discuss this at their first meeting in October in mm -hmm. hopes of resolving it. Perhaps after that meeting they will say, okay, 
We're not going to be able to resolve this. Selectman, would you take this matter and, and enforce in the appropriate, appropriate way in, in the courts of our, our state? Until then, they have control. The selectmen do not make subdivisions, do not make condominium de declarations, they do not make parking on private property. That's a function solely reserved under the ordinances to the planning board. Yeah. So what we're saying to you is that unless the planning board makes a request because their, their orders have been violated, this board has no authority there. You do. You can take this matter to court if you wish, if you think you're correct. But the issue still remains that they're parking in a fire lane. Well, Whether it's every single day, I'm not, that's your assumption. And I'm not suggesting that it's every single day. I don't know that they're parking there every single day. I know they are consistently parking in a fire lane, which is a public way, that is not your, on their private property. That is your assumption. Well, the, we have pictures that we submitted to the town yeah. well, uh, and the planning board with when, this letter. When and the, if you'd like, I could, I could address which, which picture would show you that. My point is that when the chief of police decides that, in fact, that is blocking the public right of way, and it's blocking the fire lane where fire vehicles have to use it, and mm -hmm. he issues citations and tickets or tows those vehicles off, then they're in violation. I'm not prepared to sit here and tell you that they're in violation, whether you take a photograph or not, when the chief of police or his officers have not issued a citation and not towed vehicles. He has that authority, and he's the one who does that authority. My suggestion to you is to talk to him in addition to talking to the planning board to resolve this issue. This board doesn't have the power to do that. Right. All that we can do is take away the fire lane. And I would like to ask about that, too. Um, does somebody, who decides exactly where the fire lanes are? Then that doesn't go to the planning board. Rec recommendation comes from the fire chief, the chief of police, the public works director, mm -hmm. to the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. We consider the fire lanes to be the paved portion of the roadway, mm -hmm. not the layout of the public roadway the paved portion of the roadway where the fire equipment must operate. Mm -hmm. So as far as we see it, there will be a fire lane there afterwards? There will be, and the planning board should decide where the vehicles are so, parked outside of that fire lane. So Mr. Dumpke is uh, entitled to have a fire lane on his street like everybody else? And he does. Yeah. Except but people there's people park parking in it. Yeah. I know to me it doesn't sound right either, but... Um, the, this has been discussed here by the chief, and the chief's in the audience if he wants to say anything. Um, but, and I'll tell you, from what the history I've seen, the board almost goes with what the chief recommends. Mr. Chairman, if you recall, we had a meeting on this very topic. I believe it was on April 2nd of 2018. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot new to report. I've seen the pictures that were provided. One of the problems we, we, we encounter is we're here... People have had time to look at things. Stumpy's brought his attorney in, studied this thoroughly. We're talking about somebody that's out there doing the job of writing a parking ticket, and when you look at where the lines are, as to where the paved portion of the road ends or appears to end, compared to where the private property starts, those were great pictures. You make my case. If we were to go to court, I would use your pictures to show that the average person, without a plot plan sitting in front of them, would look at that and determine that those cars were parked on private property, not the public way. Because the, the only place we have a right to put a fire lane is on public property. The planning board can enact a fire lane on private property. So there's a lot of facilities that we build in this community where there are fire lanes that exist on private property. So that does happen? That does happen, but it doesn't happen here, mm -hmm. okay? That's not something the board controls the roadways and the rules of our roads. Mm -hmm. I control and determine the enforcement as the chief of police, okay? To say that we're somehow excluding 2nd Street, you're kind of new to this, uh, so I won't take offense to what you said, because we could go to 1st Street, 2nd Street, 3rd Street, 4th Street, all the way up to 9th Street, and the same circumstance exists. We have a conflict with some of the planning issues in this community and the fire lanes up in that area. We could start with the signage. The signage needs to be improved because one of the problems we encountered when we first started issuing tickets up in that area, when we first enacted the fire lanes, was people thought at the top of each corner, and I took a ride today just to make sure I was, my mind wasn't failing me, there's a little yellow box at the top of each corner from Ocean Boulevard down, say, 10th Street, and then from Kings Highway up. Those boxes indicate no parking that no parking is the setback from an intersection that's enumerated in state law. 
but we put the signs right in the middle of each one of those boxes. So me, most people think that's the fire lane. So people are parking all the time on those areas, not just Second Street. And, I, and again, I just want to make sure that's clear. This isn't just a Second Street issue. I understand Mr. Dumpke's issue is somebody that's raised it. But this is not a Second Street issue. This is an entire North Shore issue that's got to be resolved uh -huh. before you can ask new people, you know, part-time people that are up there just writing parking tickets. And when they do, when they were called up there, they also should be confronted in the way they've been con confronted several times, Mr. Dumpke. A little courtesy and manner would be would go a long way in trying to resolve this. Well, it's a little bit when it comes also, to courtesy. Okay, so excuse me, I'm manner. speaking. I'm speaking. I didn't interrupt you and your attorney. I expect not. See, okay. just my point. I finish in an Thank you. Be able to say something. Well, we're up there trying to do our job. These folks don't have plot plans and files and briefcases with them. Yeah. They have common sense. I'm the one who wrote that ticket up on Second Street that the attorney referred to. Because I looked at it, and it appeared to me to be a violation. Somebody raised the issue with me. I did some research. I went and I saw the plot plan, because it's one of the buildings that does have a plot plan. Not every building has a plot plan in this mm -hmm. community. I didn't know that. Yeah. OK? <laughs> I think somewhere the common sense part's got to get into this factor, and it seems to be getting lost in the conversations. When I looked at the car, it appeared to be in a place it shouldn't be. When I looked at it, there's that conflict between our fire lane and what the planning board has done. These things have to be fixed, similar to what we did down on the main beach. If you look down A, B, C, all the streets there, it's very clear where you can and can't park. It's all marked, proper postings. There's a lot we could do up there to try to make this easier for everybody to understand where they can and can't park. But for us to get caught in the middle of this, I can't tell you the hours I have into this one neighborhood dispute. It's, it's getting ridiculous the amount of time uh, we're putting into this. The other thing is, though, too, and this doesn't have to do with Mr. Dumke, um, <clears throat> is that there are almost on every street there's neighborhood disputes about this. Absolutely. It would be nice if there was a way that we could, uh, you know, mark the parking spaces and maybe the fire lanes. Or do you think it ha is this the type of thing that it would have to be, uh, everything would have to be, um, have a surveyor come in and, uh, or is there a way to put those streets? I would be there? just cautious of this. It's one of those things where you could be opening Pandora's box because when you drive, and I've seen you down there, Mr. Griffin, when you drive down some of these streets, when you look at where, say, the telephone poles are, mm -hmm. telephone poles are put in towns right away, not on no, private property. No, I, yeah. I and there's people that have built out, you know, decorative or protective rocks, vegetation, rocks, you name it. It's all over the place down there. So if we go down this path, if we're going to do, you know, if this is a Second Street issue, we're, we're going to... I'm in favor of that. I just wish that we could do it. And I don't know why we don't. It must be the expense of it. Because mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about it and talked about it and talked about it. And like you pointed out, down there on those uh, lettered streets, that is what we did. We did take people's property when they were using town property. Uh, in some cases, people had to take part of their buildings off, um, like the Dolphin Motel on mm -hmm. Ashworth Avenue. Um, so the town has always um, uh, taken control of their property. And, you know, so in the future, I wish there was a way. Maybe this is something that we could consider for a Warren article or something. So thank you. Did you want to talk any more with the chief? Uh well, I don't my, my only comment is, is if you're gonna if you're gonna allow some people you can, you can't allow some people and this is a disagreement I've had with your officers you can't allow some people to park in the fire lane and not some of the others so if you're gonna let some people park you got to let everybody park in the fire lane you can't just pick and choose a few people that maybe somebody knows or whatever so if it's going to be That's parking in the fire lane we uncalled for parking in the fire lane my, my client's talking he yeah, didn't and, you. And i didn't get in professional with him let's, either let's let's let so him finish that, and the other thing is is you know when when you when you're supposed to have when you're supposed to have two parking places per unit and then one unit has four registered vehicles and a trailer that's not registered i think that's where part of the issue comes from so, you know, and, and that's what the kind of things that need to be taken into consideration when you, you know, and you I, I don't disagree with you. Everybody's got to try and understand, well, that's part of the problem is you, you don't have enough parking places to begin with and then you have four registered vehicles. You understand that's not a police department matter, though. Right. It's not. I don't enforce zoning. 
I, I get it, but I'm just saying. I understand your frustration, but that's, I'm standing up here right now. If you're asking me to do that, that's not something that's okay, in my that's purview. Okay. The board and the planning board, and that's why we're here instead of. That's why we want to wait until the planning board. I would also like to just respond to, to the chief uh, uh, regarding one simple comment, and, and it, and it uh, rubbed me the wrong way. So I'll leave it at this, but courtesy works in a two-way street. Um, the, the owners of that property also show, need to show some uh, courtesy to my client as well. Um, I, I think respect is also a two-way two -way street. So um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. But I, I think the issue still remains that it's, it's very clear based on uh, the pictures that were submitted, uh, the ticket that was issued, uh, and a number of other issues, that this is a, a clear selective enforcement that I think this body should look into uh, whether or not a planning board reviews this plan or not. Um, I would also submit that there is uh, consistently, as this picture shows, two vehicles parked along, along 2nd Street. There is only one approved parking spot for that, uh, uh, that property along that street, not two. Uh, so even for argument's sake, as the chief was arguing, that the line may be difficult to identify depending on the officer, depending on the day, depending on the parking of the vehicle, there is simply only one spot uh, that the planning board approved um, we don't think they're complying with that spot, and we think they're over, over into the fire lane, and I think the pictures show that. But uh, the fact remains that even if they are complying, uh, the, they, they are still continuing to violate the plan and, the, and the, uh, the parking ordinance by having two vehicles parked along the side of that street. Thank you. And I, you know, I don't, I, I would try to bring this to a vote for you, but I don't think you would win. So. Uh. I, 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 I guess the question is, it doesn't sound like anybody's going to do anything. So even if the planning board says that they're going to, that, I mean, they've already said it once, that it's not in compliance. So is it, is it worth me even bringing him back here uh, to the board once the planning board says that it's not in compliance? You know, I don't know. Uh, we're hoping. Uh, we just I, I talked to the uh, uh, town planner this morning. And it seems like he feels that there is going to be some type of solution, but I don't know what. The only other thing I would add, and, uh, and I understand this is you know, not something my client wants to be and, and to have me here, and, and, and frankly, we'd like this issue to be resolved. And so we're trying to do that uh, the, the, the most uh, direct way we, we think is possible. We intentionally set up a meeting with the town manager and with the attorney to uh, thinking that would potentially resolve it or alleviate the concern. Um, at that meeting, we, we, it, was, it was determined or at least recommended that we submit uh, a request for an appointment before this body. Um, the issue that we were requesting was relating to that ordinance, and we understood that after that meeting that the, the planning board would have to deal with an issue separate, but that those were independent issues. And it, uh, it just strikes me as, the, at this point, the board not willing to enforce a rule uh, that is clearly on the books and is clearly being violated. Uh, and at the very least, I would ask this board to look further into that uh, separate and apart from anything that the planning board may be looking into. Well, we will be looking into everything, and I think there'll be many more comments after the planning board meeting. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Are you going to let the yeah, other yeah, motion there. for somebody to speak? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, come right up to the podium if you'd like. And if you guys want to wait till he's finished, yeah. you can speak again. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Just simple two points uh, that I wanted to make. First is <clears throat> the parking space for 739 that was approved by the town is, uh, through a recent survey, a legitimate dimension for parking of 9 by 18. It's over 9 wide and is 18 long. And it's within side of the fire lane <clears throat> based on the recent um, survey we had done the property. And then the second thing, all I would ask is, if we're parking in a fire lane and people are parking in the fire lane from 2nd through 19th and we will be ticketed, then I would ask that every individual who parks in a fire lane in this neighborhood was adhered, has the same expectation. So when it's adhered to from 2nd through 19th, then, then I'll move out of that space. But I'm following what I see in this town as acceptable, and all I'm asking for is the same consideration. It's acceptable in the numbered streets. Um, my neighbor in five, um, Second Street parks along uh, Kings Highway in the same area where there's a, a no parking sign. So it's, 
it's it's all over, as everyone has stated, and I've been in this uh, myself for the last two years. So I will comply with whatever the town has all residents comply with. Yeah, and I'm glad that you said that, because that's something that I personally have asked and brought it forward to this meeting on numerous yeah. times, mm -hmm. that that is an important thing. No one's going to do anything that they're supposed to do if everyone doesn't do it, and it's not fair to have everyone do it. So maybe that might be a result of what will come out of this and hopefully some other good things, too. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. I got a question real yeah. quick. Yes. You were saying you, you had it, it was a 9 by 18 parking space. 9 wide. 9 wide. One space or one two? One space. So there's one space on the side of your property for one space. One space. And it's on your property. It's on, it's on your property. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, did you want to? Uh, that was the, actually the question we were going to ask. That okay. It was on the, along the side of 2nd Street. There was one space that was a 9 by 18. Uh, and, and the only other thing I would add is, is we, we agree with the gentleman as to, as to consistent enforcement. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be this property gets a, a, a different uh, a shake than another property. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're parking in a fire lane, then they should be ticketed. Yep. Across the board. I'm totally for it. I, I just can't believe it's not happening now. So that's what hopefully will come out of this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, board. Moving on to Edmund Keeley, uh, 7 Redmond Lane. Yeah, do you want to join us at the table? Yeah. Is Mr. Kelty or Keeley here? Seems not. So we will move on to the town manager's report. Okay. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> members of the board, <coughs> excuse me. The uh, Port Authority, as you know, had been uh, queued in, uh, with regards to deficiencies in uh, their fueling facility at the State Pier in the harbor. According to the latest report that I have received from Captain uh, Gino Marconi, that work has been completed. <clears throat> Everything is the way it should be in the system, and they are being responsible for its continued maintenance and, and operation. The first LED street lights have been installed, the first lights being installed on uh, Laurel Lane, Edgewood, and Morningside Drives. Uh, this project is expected to be completed during the uh, 2019 weather permitting, they're talking about finishing this fall, which would be very good. Uh, does the board wish to investigate the new authority that permits electric aggregation for electric customers in Hampton? It is suggested that an investigation be conducted and that if the board feels that it would be for the benefit of those living within the community, a town meeting vote would be required. What does that mean? Can you explain that better? The yeah. aggregation basically is, is uh, it's basically a pool, uh, and you're allowed to join or not join depending upon oh, your okay. individual requirements. I was reading about this. Uh, and the town would investigate it. They would try to come to some conclusion with there are a number of vendors. We've already had a couple uh, visit us. Um, and they would be looking for uh, purchasing electricity from other vendors, not necessarily the local electric company. The local electric company would wield the power to you. Uh, and it's similar to what we do in the Public Works Department and for the town, town offices and the other town buildings. We buy power from a different source. It's wheeled over the lines with our current electric supplier in town that owns their lines. Uh, they're paid a fee for that. Uh, the town gets a big discount on their billings. We save about thirty to $50,000 a year. The school is doing a likewise thing with all of their facilities. This, this new law which takes effect October 1st of this year, uh, opens it up to all businesses and private residential businesses, uh, provided the town meeting votes to allow it to happen. But I think before we just go rushing off into something like that, that we need to do some thorough investigation as to what would happen. So that this would be a possible warrant article? Yes, it would have to be a warrant article approved by town meeting, assuming the investigation was fruitful and the board approved it. Okay. Yeah. I make a motion that we the town does the investigation. Do you need that? Yes, I, I believe we need the authority to do that, sir. I'll second it. Um, Comments? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to have a little more substantive discussion on that. And uh, is this something that would this replace Unitil? Would we have problems with uh, stuff on poles that reflects poorly? Would are we getting ourselves into trouble by, by going this route? It wouldn't replace any of Unitel's facilities. 
Um, they would still deliver the electric power directly to your house as they do now. Yeah. It's just that they'd be what was called wheeling it. It would be purchased from another vendor, perhaps Niagara Electric, which don't is a federal. they do that now? Federal, no, not necessarily. They don't do it now. Uh, and it would be purchased at a discount. And you would be the benefit of the discount. Uh, I'm just a little skeptical. Well, that's yeah. why we need to investigate so, it to find out what it's all about. Do you have any questions, Regina? Yeah, I'm a little skeptical too, but I guess if we're going to do an investigation, that yeah. we have a first and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's also recommended the board vote to require the numerical tally of all votes on warrant articles included, including in the budget under RSA 4013. We do this every year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a formal procedure, uh, and I would suggest the board go ahead and vote that. I will so move. Second. Go ahead. All the, any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Yeah, we received a notice today from the Municipal Association. Uh, the budget for the state has not been approved, as we all know. And um, the municipal associations giving a warning out. Uh, it's going to be revisited by the legislature on Wednesday, September 25th. Hopefully, something comes out of that because right now there are no revenues approved in order to set the tax rate. That's a problem in itself uh, because they'll be doing an estimate of the revenues. If those estimates are wrong, we'll be issuing a second tax bill which is not a terribly good thing to do, but it would cost an awful lot of money for the town to do that. So the state has not made a decision on this yet. Hopefully the legislature and the governor will come to some joint resolution of this so that we will have just a regular tax bill going out and everything will be as normal. So I just want to let everybody know that there's a possibility here that we, we may have some uh, problems. Questions and, for the town I, manager's we, report? We, we send these guys to Concord and some of them go down to Washington. No wonder it's a mess. Did you have any questions? Uh, one quick question, Fred. Ma'am. The dredging is going to start what date? Sometime in the month of October. That's October. the best they'll tell me, and it's supposed to be finished by statute by, the, by February. Wow. Okay. And it probably will take the entire period of time. Did you want to ask something, Jim? Thank you. Sir. I was just going to say that people should contact their reps Absolutely. On this Holler. budget thing, yeah. they should call, they should email and, and contact the reps to, to get yeah. together and do something. And I have notified all of our representatives and our senator of this problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rusty? While you're talking on the uh, the LED street lights, sir, the gentleman brought up the fact on Highland Ave we have a number of lights that we own that aren't working. Can you right. Make sure that gets looked into. I've ha I have a note. Okay, and then also the three that were removed. I'm not aware of any granting for removal of streetlights. I wasn't so. either, so yeah. I, I was hoped they would put that. I, I have a note of that as well, and we'll find out about that. Very good, thank you. And Regina, on the I'm, town manager's report. No, I'm good on that. Okay, thank you for your report, Fred. Thank I you, appreciate sir. it. Um, under old business, the first uh, is the sports betting warrant article. Um, Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, I've given you each a copy of the statutory article uh, which says, quote, shall we allow the operation of sports book retail locations within the town of Hampton, close quote. The statute says that language has to be used in the question. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that somebody needs to tell people what it's about. And uh, that's usually done by the person who wants to have it done. I've talked to that person, at least one of them. I don't know how many there are, but I've once talked to me and I said, it's up to you folks to inform people about what's going on here and to ask them to vote for or against a particular article. Mm -hmm. uh, but it will not take effect unless the town votes it. This money is shared towards school appropriations. Yeah. So if, um, would this be a town-sponsored or a selectman-sponsored article, or would it be a petition driven article it can be done either way because it says it shall be under the provisions of rsa 39 and, and uh, under rsa 31 the selectman can place a warrant article is petitioned and how when do uh, selectman articles have to be in by i believe it's the 10th of january and when do petitioned articles have to be in 10th by? of january it's the same date so if if somebody was so inclined to want this it would behoove them to make sure they get us the information on who, what, where, when, and why we should have this. I would suggest that that's exactly the case, and, and I did provide you, along with the 
the, the wording of the article, right. Right. the statutory requirements, mm -hmm. which are quite extensive. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure somebody's going to have to sit there and explain what they are and how they're going to run it and so on and so forth. Right. Because I think that's a valuable piece of information. And that's why I, I think it would be better off to have a well-worded petition article than yes. a selectman's article. Yes. But that's... This right. article has to be worded in this fashion. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. But yeah. they, to... To get up there and explain it, I don't think I could do a, the ju justice to explain right. why it is, yeah. as well as anybody here. And if it was a petition, I, now, I have no problem making a selectman's article, but mm. they better make sure they have people that want to get up and speak about it. I, I, don't. I was going to say, I think it should be a selectman's warrant article, mm -hmm. because we did the same thing with the, uh, the yeah. gambling. Keno. It's the same yeah. thing. Keno. Yes, yeah. it is. That's exactly yeah. how we did it. Yeah. But, I, but I, I, I agree with you, but yeah. they got to make sure they have people that can help us explain Well, it. that's true, and maybe we can get someone. I, you would think that they would have a sample uh, type thing that they want people to do. I just heard about this. Uh, a lot of it was on the news tonight. Yeah. I didn't really pay that this, much this attention. Does, the statute does require the selectmen to hold a public hearing. And uh, people who are interested in doing this, I would think, would approach the selectman's office and say we'd be willing to come and explain on TV exactly what this is all about and how it operates. It's going to be a public hearing that um, everyone is going why to, don't, many people are going to want to come. Why don't we plan a public hearing? Yeah, and yeah, we it should will be a one of those more nights than... where we want to uh, make sure we have plenty of time. Yep. Uh, it will be a yep. sensitive article, probably, but I think it is something that we should keep our fingers on it because it's something that's oh. going to be happening in the town. Oh, absolutely. I, I think it's a great opportunity for yeah. the town. I just think that we need to make sure that somebody's there to explain it. So if, if we need to have a public hearing, then let, let's schedule one. My suggestion them. is you have more than one. Yes. So that people clearly understand. So you have to have one a certain number of days before the town meeting. Mm -hmm. That doesn't preclude the fact that you could have some later as long as you have the one before the well, town meeting. We could have one even before we have the warrant article so that people can yes. at least. Yeah. True. Yeah. So I read this and it's really complicated. It is. <laughs> it's really complicated. Yeah. And it's especially, I think, important that who, like it says, retail. Yep. You know, what does that mean? Right. retail any store any convenience store so i think it needs to be well explained and i think everybody has to know exactly i mean because the charity casinos and stuff probably have it in effect that they can do that but retail yeah. so i think it's you, you need the couple public hearings and you need it really explained and we need to make sure it's done right that's exactly why i don't that's, think it should yeah. be a petition warrant yeah well, i agree with because Rick on that. if it becomes wrong the whole a whole year could go by and, and I, I don't have a problem with that but we have they have the expertise these people at uh, ocean gaming or yeah. right. the other place at, at the Hampton Beach casino they yeah. have the they have the expertise in this and they got to be able to make sure they can get out and explain it to us so we can explain it because well, I don't think any of us can explain it. ocean gaming wants to do it yeah oh well, I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of people that want to do it yeah. if there's more than yeah. one I mean we need to understand that we need to understand what's coming <laughs> back to the town of Hampton. Uh, is anything coming back to the town of Hampton, or is it like Ocean Gaming that's supposed to give uh, 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 <coughs> preference to any um, uh, charities here in the town, or you know, people like the uh, which do very well with it, the uh, historical society. It provides a lot of money yeah. for a lot of different things. So this is very important. But we need to make sure we're getting something. Absolutely. And so well, that's, that's why what I think it goes to the education, I believe. Like Absolutely. Like the, uh, Sounds like another thing for Mark to get uh, involved in. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, uh, do we need to have a vote? Oh, no. No. No, you wish to see the article and the statute, so I provided those to you. Yeah. I think it's a little early to start talking about warrant articles of this nature, but now that we've introduced it, I think it's important that we get a hold of Ocean Gaming and tell them they need to be prepared to hold a public hearing, and anybody else who's interested who can get licensed would need to do the same thing. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know, at least put it on our radar that we need to have a public hearing. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. So in, they did say on the little bit that I watched on the TV, they expect this to happen sometime in 220. That one thing I did catch. Um, okay, moving on to the no, fifth. Uh, uh. Mm. Sorry about that. I had a little coughing fit. Uh, I am not in favor of having the Board of Selectmen sponsor this article. I would hope 
that it would be a, an appropriate private petition article, and they will obey whatever it is they're told to on that big, complicated pile of stuff. Well, when the time comes, stuff. we'll see how everyone feels about but it. But we're going to have to uh, have hearings and so forth anyway. Oh, yeah. Just uh, any kind of petition article. So, so uh, I don't have a problem with that if it's properly petitioned. But I personally would not be in favor of this board well, When the time it. comes, we'll figure out what the rest of the board feels yeah. like. So moving on to the 15-day extension for the 2019 MS-1 report. Mr. Walsh. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, they are in the process of finishing the evaluation of the town. I am told that it will be on your agenda for the 7th of October, which is more than adequate time for us to do all the necessary things that are required in order to get the tax rate set, have the Department of Revenue appropriate it. We've talked to them. We've talked to the assessors. They know what's going on. This is a, a normal function when you do an assessment or reassessment process. I'm not concerned about this, except that we need to do the extension so that we will not be fined. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want to pay the state anything because no. we can submit a piece of paper a little late. I make a motion that we extend it. That we fifteen. Days. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. While we're on 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 that, how how have the uh, uh, requests come in for um, people that are are uh, looking for their uh, on the assessments? They were. How did that? Actually, it was light. There weren't a lot of folks who came in and talked to the assessors. It's still going on. We still receive some phone calls. And the assessors are, in fact, taking <coughs> care of those phone calls. There, there were two today, for instance. Um, people who have been away or weren't mm -hmm. able to get here for some reason. Yeah. Uh, they're still going through that process. And, and, uh, but they are totaling up what needs to be totaled up so the MS-1 can, in fact, be finished and we can we can file for a tax rate, but yeah, they're still working diligently. I heard it was down probably like three percent or four percent of people that have put in for requests. For. Yeah, I'd say three percent was a, probably a pretty good figure, uh, which is about what we had during the last reval. Three to four percent has, has been the average. Um, we we really haven't had a lot of tax abatements filed, uh, and of course we haven't gotten to the new tax rate for this year. Yeah. Uh, so once we do that, we issue the tax bills, and and uh, I think it's 30 days expires, and then people are free to, mm -hmm. in fact, file for an abatement uh, with the board for a further examination, and then potentially go on to the state or the courts. Yeah. The um, it seems to me that it is light, and it seems to me that many people have told me they're very happy with the way it goes. Who uh, I had written the guy's name down, and it wasn't Ed. Uh, that they talk to, and there's some guy there they really like. Paul? Paul? I'm, I'm not sure. I saw him. But he is, must be an outstanding uh, person because I've heard about him for more than mm -hmm. one person. And so I think that uh, it's interesting. Have you heard of any um, r that have been really a spike? I mean, more than 20% or more than 50%? <laughs> no, I haven't. Okay, because I've heard yeah. Yeah, me that too. supposedly someone's went up 70%. Mm. The only way that would happen would be if they mm. had built a major addition to their property or done something of another nature, uh, or they they finally got into their property and it was being assessed because it had never been properly assessed before. Well, this is a trailer park. Huh. Well, trailer parks, you know, it could have been assessed for $500, and when they got in, it could be assessed for $25,000. Yeah, it but depends. no, it's not the houses. It's the land uh -huh. that the trailer oh, okay. park in. So that's what I said to them. I said, well, maybe it's because it's land. It's commercial land. Commercial land. And mm -hmm. and I suggested they make sure they do something about it if they have yeah. questions. Right. Mm -hmm. They should all be uh, assessed pretty much the same for trailer parks with, uh, because they're considered to be commercial. Unless it's only one person who owns everything, which yeah. is pretty unusual. Yeah, it's over near you, Rusty. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, nobody's talking to me about it. I have a about it, so. question about the assessments. <clears throat> so I checked. I know, Fred, I brought this up to you at one point in time, and then I got another word about it today, and I went in and I double-checked my own property. And on the vision appraisal, it's still for, it's showing 2019, 2019, but it's not 2019. It's... Last year's figure is listed twice, like I told you before. It still hasn't been fixed. As a matter of fact, it was fixed. So what they've done is go back and Vision has gone back and changed it again. Yeah. They do a sweep every month 
on the on the systems to make sure the 2018 valuations are updated. Now they lost the revaluation proposal for here, so I have to think there's some mm. mind block going on in their heads. <clears throat> They're not supposed to be going back and updating because we already have the 2019 figures into the computer system. This will be the second time that they have, in fact, canceled them all out and put 2018 back. That's weird. That's just not acceptable. So, so are you dealing with that? I will deal with it tomorrow morning, <clears throat> and it's not going to be as pleasant as the last yeah, time I, I dealt with it. Yeah, I just found out about it a little while ago. Yeah. And um, also, the other question, so you think we'll be fine waiting until October 7th to sign off on everything? Yeah, normally we don't get them to set the tax rate until late October, early November, uh, with a payment date sometime in early December. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if it goes much beyond that, <clears throat> theoretically, the tax bills don't have to be issued until the last working day of March in the following year, because that's oh. when the tax year ends. But no one's going to stand for that, and I'm certainly not going to stand for yeah. it, because then nobody's going to be able to take it off their federal income tax. Yeah. Uh, that's just not acceptable for anybody. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make this work, and, and we'll be on the, the state's case to get it to work, even though they have to give us some estimated figures for revenues. Okay. Huh. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to the appointment to represent the town to serve on the Commission on Water, Drinking Water, established by House Bill 495. Mr. Welch. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you have the opportunity as a board to uh, nominate someone and have them confirmed and, and sworn into office, and uh, we would certify that, I believe, it's to the clerk of the House, uh, but certainly to the Secretary of State. Um, the town is allowed to have one member on this commission, and I would suggest that it's probably a valuable thing for the town to do. Hmm. We need to have a voice in things that are going to affect the taxpayers in this town. And we still don't have a volunteer. Uh, nobody who's come to us and said they would like to do it. We've had some recommendations for various people, but no confirmation by the people mm -hmm. who have been named. There were two people that were interested in it. So <clears throat> we'll uh, see. When do we have to make the appointment by? Well, they're going to have their first meeting at the end of this month. Which I can't go to. That's mm. why. <laughs> It's on a Friday. Who were the two people that were? Fred Rice was one, uh -huh. and somebody else. I'm not David sure. Wood. David Wood. <clears throat> and so they volunteered. Well, kind of. Well, one, I think. I think they were both that. volunteered, not by themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Did they agree? But I have received Fred, no confirmation. I read the letter. Fred, after he was thinking of doing it, he's declined. He declined. Yeah. About David Wood, he's he was recommended by Fred, and he has brought nothing in to say he he would serve. So Fred's hoping a person that's been like himself, that's volunteered on many, 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 many commissions, will be thinking about this. We, it will be something fun for somebody. Can we send yeah. a note to David Wood and see if he's interested? We Where can. His name's been yeah. come up. Why don't yeah. we try that? I, I think and that's. If we don't get somebody by the next time, we can all we'll all look for somebody. Yeah, I've mentioned right. it to a few people. Mm. Okay. Okay. Good yeah. idea. Okay. Any old business? Anyone have old business? Oh, I might as well stop. Seeing none, we'll move on to new business. An award of printing of annual know. report waivers. Um, Mr. We Chairman, we we have, um, as you know, we've gone out to bid I think four or five years in a row. And the low bidder has always been the one we're recommending here, the Country Press. Um, they do yeoman work for us. Uh, their prices have been very, very steady. <clears throat> We'd like to award this bid to them. Is this we, the one in Seabrook? No, no. No, this is not. This, no. is, this is a Massachusetts firm the who's and been doing all good. the reports in this area, and they've been very good with us. They've been really... And they, you, you saw the 2018 report, and I think it's, it's an excellent report. Uh, they're talking the number of pages we're estimating at 350, which fluctuates from year to year. We always estimate a little high just so we don't get any penalties. We have 1,200 copies. Uh, the cost is $6,735.82. That's down substantially from when I got here because we were doing uh, copies and mailing them to every registered voter in town or every residence in town. Yeah. And we were spending, you know, Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars. So we've mm. tried to keep this cost down. Um, 
is uh, if we have additional pages, it's eighteen dollars and fifty cents for addition for each additional page. They've been exceptionally good to us, so I, we're recommending that they continue to print the report. I make a motion that we go with them. Yeah, I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, I, I have some new business. Good. Or it could be old business, but it was mentioned here tonight. It's old new? About the, uh, yeah, about the old trees and the <clears throat> wanting some new trees. You know, I'm all for, is there any way we can get those trees on that street? Maybe we wouldn't have that light problem there. Plus, it's an important street, and it would help buffer the noise from all those bells and stuff like that. There's always a way to do this, but I've got to tell you that deciduous trees won't help that process. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to have pine trees Which in order to block the wind. There. And, and those are the ones we took down because everybody on the street was complaining about them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think actually before long, the others have to come down as well. They're, they're, they're fairly old. The ones we took down, we did bore tests on, and they were red-hearted. In some cases, they didn't have any center to the tree. Mm -hmm. So they've been there for better than 100 years. Yeah. It's a long time. Well, is there some way that we could um, have someone come in and give us an estimate of a new a plan to put something that wouldn't have the, the mm -hmm. unfavorable results that those old pine trees had because there's a zillion different type of pine trees. Oh, yeah. There are some that are smaller and that might be more beneficial. I mean, there's such a science to what they're doing with plants and trees today. Well, I, the, uh, maybe do a warrant article. That's the tree warrant. Uh, the yes. public works director. But normally when we get into a situation like this, we, we refer to the uh, professional arborist at the University mm -hmm. of New Hampshire, yeah. who tends to come in and give us his professional advice, and I'm sure we can get him to come over and do that. Yeah, I yeah. suggest that Good. we do that. And do it in, in time <clears throat> for a Warren article, because if we did plant some trees there, they need to plant some nice trees, and I assume that they are expensive. They're not cheap. You're correct. Yeah. You're correct. <laughs> well and, and depending upon what type of trees you want. If you want pine trees, it's one cost. If you want pretty flowering trees, it's another cost. If you want columnar maples, that's another cost. Uh, some trees are hardy with salt because, of course, the, the road is treated. Um, the other thing that we could ask would be that the, the statute allows the recipients to be people who are uh, abutters to the sidewalk, so it could be planted behind the sidewalk. And that may be uh, something that they would permit. And the town would still remain titled to it, and we'd still be responsible for them, and clean up the, uh, the trees if they get broken down or need to be replaced. Uh, so there are a number of different things that we could look at and do. Yeah, well, I think that we need to do them pretty quickly so that we can decide, mm -hmm. you know, maybe even if they need to be done at this time of the year or before winter or whatever. Normally it would be spring. It's a little it's late spring. in the year to start planting That's trees now. Uh, I, will, I will talk to the Public Works Director tomorrow and ask him to contact the Chief Arborist at the University of New Hampshire and get them over here and let them take a look at the road and see what best could be done with that particular street. Okay, great. Mrs. Wolseley? Yes. Those trees, uh, I've asked uh, Public Works to, to take those trees down. They are causing a lot of damage to the houses. Some of them ha are already gone. But with big branches and stuff like that, those, those trees are heavy and they're really big and they're ripping up the sidewalk. Oh, yeah. That sidewalk is not safe and you've got people walking down that street, which is very heavily traveled, and they're walking in the roadway. So yes, I think that having the arborist in would be an excellent idea, but we need to be really careful. I like, I love trees myself. I hate to see them cut down, but in that area, when you have big branches falling on people's front porch <coughs> and all that stuff, that is, that's gotta stop. Trees have a... Uh a given lifespan depending upon the type of the tree. Mm -hmm. And those pine trees have pretty much reached the end of their oh, lifespan. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, we have the same problem in the cemetery where the trees are starting to shed yep. large limbs and have reached the point where they're infested with all kinds of ants. And that's why we're taking them down because mm -hmm. they become a danger. 
Yeah, they need to pick a tree that doesn't uh, uh, attract animals or insects. Right. And, you know, people, it's hard for people to even imagine, but if you look through old books and that, you'll see that Hampton always had a ton of trees. Mm. All we along, had the maple blight years yeah, ago yeah, that, 50s. that killed a lot of yeah. trees. Yeah. All along, um, you know, uh, Route 1, it was all treed mm-hmm. all the way to Seabrook. So we need to do something. Yep. Especially on that road. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good well, idea. Good. I got one more thing, yeah. and I should, probably should have could have brought this up in yeah. the old business was, um, and I and I contacted you and the public works director today about that sign being, uh, the welcome to Hampton yes. sign at the North yep. Hampton town line was, I guess struck by a car. It was struck by a car, and we're looking for their insurance carrier, and we've already started to get people together to try to fix it. Okay. Very good. Hmm. They made a mess of it, obviously. Yeah, they did. <laughs> I have two yeah. things for new business. Um, I was talking to a senior resident on High Street, and afterwards I've already spoken with Fred and Renee, and Renee's going to incorporate most of it into his next report. But the other thing that she kept brighting up is a full-time senior center. So I'm planning on also Mary Louise going to the academy Yes, I'll opening be day. Yeah. And I was going to talk to Kathleen Murphy because I know that they're going to have some t- sort of a community center, but the seniors in this town that have everything at the library really would like to see a full-time place that they could go to. Mm-hmm. And they also request of their complete senior bridge schedule that they have yeah. two, three, four days a week <clears throat> could be to- posted on the Town of Hampton website because I guess right now they only show one day. Yeah. So I told her that I would bring that up tonight, and I am doing so. And the other thing I want to bring up is um, Chapter 733, which is reports to selectmen. I've gone through this, and I feel like this might not be happening. I spoke a little bit with Fred about it. And I know at least one other selectman and myself sometimes are frustrated with how we find out information. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to list all the events to be reported, but specifically the method of communication, the town manager and or police department dispatch will communicate this information directly to all members of the board. So it doesn't say anything about just three. So I would like, just like to mm-hmm. make abide a by that. abide by this chapter, if we could yeah. I'll go it into the future immediately. I'd make that motion. I'll second, yeah. Because we, we really do need to know what's happening. Yeah. Well, this probably would have been a good thing to ask when the um, chief of police was here. What do you think of this, Mr. Welch? Well, as you may remember, Mr. Chairman, when I first came on, I complained about this because I was getting less than two hours sleep a night because that phone would ring every 20 minutes. And <clears throat> the board decided at that point that they could be reported the following morning unless it was a major catastrophe of some kind. Well, I'm fine with the following morning. Yeah. I, mean, I don't well, expect. But the ordinance says immediately. Well, it's could we revise re- the ordinance? Re- well, no. It be reported immediately, and, and that's kind of a problem because sometimes it needs to be. I mean, if we have a major fire in town, everybody should know about it right then. Well, we used to get texts. I don't know yeah. what. What about the stopped. what about the horn in the fire department? I, you, we always used to know when there was a working I fire. I don't believe it's working. Well, it shouldn't be working. No, I don't believe it <laughs> is that's, working. That's so, is this something that should be included discussion with the chief of police? I can talk to the chief about it. Okay, mm-hmm. my chief too. Well, for a while, I was getting emails from, uh, I believe, from mostly from the police department. I was uh, getting them directly from yeah. both chiefs. Well, I sometimes I still do, but I mean, yeah. not well, for I, since systems. I've been here all 15 years, they've never in, um, notified everyone. At, mm. It's supposed to be, as I always understood it, at least three, but I've seen it through many times. It's only been one. Yeah. Yeah, but pretty much that's how it's <clears throat> always gone. So I would like to have some feedback from, you know, is there a reason for this? Mm-hmm. So I think for maybe if we have Fred discuss it with them and come back and mm-hmm. let us know. It's yeah. five of us yeah. elected, so it's, I don't yeah. quite understand. It shouldn't that. be a big deal to get out an email on the spot because mm-hmm. the email well, will show the time. Think so, but the I only, think we the only thing I've ever seen them email out, email out is the uh, the working fire. <clears throat> so uh, I get I get all kinds of emails on all these things, and then we get press releases from usually from uh, Hobbsy when he's doing a yeah right yeah it always comes out right and that would be I think what else is there that we need to that we uh, it should uh, anytime there's been an unintended death or a yeah I, I get those you get the, drove yeah 
So but they shouldn't be waking you up at night. I mean, you're out of town, and you, well, they shouldn't be begging you. The orders of the prior we board were that everyone was to be called immediately. And oh, that's I, what was going on, and I said that's yeah. just driving everybody I'll crazy. Settle for an email. I'll settle for an email. I'll settle for an email. Email to everybody. I mean, nowadays, yeah. yeah, it's not 1994 anymore, so there's plenty that, of different um, ways to communicate. I think that one of the things that was the excuse at one point, because uh, other people have complained about it through the years, is that they couldn't always catch them anyway. So, you know, maybe an email is better, but I think that we really should ask him, you know, what what should be the procedure here, and I think Fred should discuss it with him. I'll discuss it with him tomorrow morning. Oh, good. And I have one other thing that concerns me. Um, I think we need to go to the regular format for this board and meet every Monday unless it's a holiday. I object to this every other Monday stuff. We've got a lot coming up. We've got the budget to go over for next year, and I object to uh, to having the meetings pushed off. So why don't you make a motion? I will. I will so move then, Mr. Chairman, that we go back to the regular scheduling for this board regular meetings every Monday night unless it's a holiday. Is there a second? I'll second it for discussion. Okay, for discussion. Okay, well, I was under the impression that we were going to be meeting every week during budget season. Yes, we are. Yes, so we haven't really started quite there yet. So when is that going to start? 7th of October. And when does it go to? It goes to the beginning of November. Mm -hmm. You've taken three That's weeks. That's not budget season. Well, I was an auditor for <laughs> That's your budget. Nine years. Yeah, That's okay. your budget season in order to get the budget done to send to the budget committee. We, because we, I need November and December to consider it. We need to meet every Monday, as boards always have done. The public is paying us a stipend to sit here and work. And I have never sat on a board before this where we did not meet, uh, the, where we did not uh, come in every other Monday or whatever. I'm very, very annoyed at not sitting down and getting work done here. Discussion. So we have a first and a second. Um, I, for one, um, as my part of my discussion, I think we should wait until October 7th, see how the budget's coming, and uh, we'll decide. We can decide week to week, but everyone here is expecting to meet during the budget season. It's so not no just a matter of the budget, Mr. Chairman. It's a um, matter Mary of... Mary Louise, I don't need you to tell me how this works, because we're still trying to teach you. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, it, if you want to, do you want to, uh, it's up to the board. I say just, you know, we, if you want to just plan it between now and November, or we can wait till next week. Take or a the vote next on the motion. Time. So all those in favor? Against? So on. I'm abstaining. I'm abstaining. So we can decide then we'll, you know, as long as everything's going forward the way it's supposed to, everyone here understands. Everyone here understands that if something important comes up, like what we were just talking about, about having that special meeting, um, what was that about? We just, betting. The betting. The betting. Yeah, we can have extra meetings, and we're willing to do that. So we can do it week to week. And we realize that budget committee, um, budget time starts at that time. It's not that we're not going to be here. But I think it's pretty clear, Mrs. Wolseley, that people don't agree with you always about doing it week, every week through the year. I don't agree with the budget time, but I haven't had time to fully think about so, that. If you so want I'll to come um, back with outline that. what you think for the budget, we'll be glad to. Well, I look at that budget for more than one month. That's all I know. Okay. Well, I think Fred is spearheading this, and we'll be glad to see what, what he's going to do. Well. Normally, the budget, the, the board of selectmen meets with each department head, each board and committee, mm -hmm. uh, at least once, <clears throat> makes a recommendation on the budget. When the budget is finished, they forward it to the budget committee. Uh, the budget committee has normally received the budget by the end of October, so they can consider it in November and a, a couple of weeks beginning in December, and then they do warrant articles come January, uh, and then we're off to town meeting in one way or another. So, so it's a very short window to mm -hmm. consider a $30 million budget, but yeah. that's the window. And I think that we can, you know, everyone here knows that we're going to be planning on coming in unless, you know, we'll see how it all goes. 
you know, we're maybe following longer than what was yeah. scheduled. It could very well be. Yeah, there's always some twist and turns. <clears throat> I just have one comment to make, and before I make it, I want to say Christy Pulliam is awesome, and there's, this is no reflection on her or the finance department. But right now, the budget that I have shows as of 731. That, in essence, tells me nothing. I need at least September to get a grip on what has been spent. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm just going to end with that statement. Yeah. You should have that by October, yeah. I would think. So, and every year, it always seems to be a little bit of a problem. It, everyone gets nervous, and everyone has a different opinion at the Budget Committee. And, you know, we're, uh, we're only here to do what we can do, and we're going to do it. No one doesn't want to uh, avoid anything. It's just we're going to see how it all flies. Um, another thing that I was going to mention, it could again be under new business and old business. If anyone's not familiar, there's a uh, large amount of people that live at the North Beach area uh, that are complaining about the noise on the wall as to be terrible. And there's people that are afraid to walk down there now. I've heard that people as well. People that yeah. live there, and uh, you know, and it's funny because. Like, I, I just said, well, how, you know, what do you think when I see people that live in that neighborhood? And the person didn't want to complain, but she did say that she won't walk there at night is or this, even in the day. Is this because of uh, It's people. Cattering. Evidently, there's been a big, uh, there was an accident down there that took out someone's front yard. Hmm. And the chief is already working on this. He's going to have a neighborhood meeting um, in the, uh, <clears throat> you know, the place at the police, you know, where they have the, the, the training room at the police department. But um, one person, from what I understand, three houses this, this week went up for sale. The people want out. Mm -hmm. Another person rented their house for either the month of July or August for $18,000, and their tenant left after three weeks. They did, and they, you know, they didn't get their money back, I don't think. You know, I've, I've gone by there at night. And there's, there's a car club that comes up. You know, they all got the little souped-up Hondas. And it was, the whole wall was lined mm -hmm. with that. And then part of it was lined with trucks. And that's what you hear, you know, because I'm right there. I live there. That's what you hear at night when they're leaving, all the loud mufflers and all that. So yeah. there are a lot of people gathering at yeah. the wall at night. And and it's up, you know, it's at Clooning at 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I heard late at night like uh, that, 2 o'clock, yeah. And what happens is that they must listen to the police radio or something because the minute someone calls the police, er they all disappear <laughs> and come back <laughs> later. So yeah. So, the cruiser. Yeah. Uh, so that's, I'm sure that the chief, I was going to ask him. Sounds like we need a modification of a 10 code. Yeah. <laughs> put an amplifier up there and, and put notices over it. Put it on to scare there. Them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Just put a cruiser up there for uh, have them increase the patrols up there. Well, yeah. I'll talk to the chief of the yeah. line. Yeah. And you know, again, doesn't the uh, state own the wall? They do. And you know, no, we should be. We getting, don't want it. Yeah, we <laughs> should be getting some support from them in some way. Um, but it's pretty bad when these people feel like that. They've moved there. There's the houses of their dreams. And well, the state regulations require allow them to, in fact, insist upon people. Um, purchasing parking tickets 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, so they could designate that area as requiring parking tickets mm. and then still, have their own their own officers enforce it. That's still metered parking anyway, so they could have that. Oh, trust me, they'll be putting you know, that in tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> maybe we, all we do, need to do is talk to the state and say, hey, we're having a problem up there. If you, yeah. if you go up and start... I can chit chat with the state. Yeah, so in, see what you can... That may correct it itself. Keep yeah. that in mind. Any closing <laughs> comments? Adjournment. Make a motion we adjourn at 2038. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. I like his style, 2038.